start recording. Okay, that's going. Welcome, guys. Um, as said earlier, we had a long discussion about landing and technique and and all the the theory behind actually doing it um, and thinking. There was a, there was like an hour discussion or something. And um, finally, we decide, I decided, well, let's just do something like this. Let's see if I can do this for a couple of people that want to participate and um, also record it for everybody that in prosperity wants to look at it. So this is basically our program. And, and I'll read it uh, out loud. We're going to look at small aircraft with a nose wheel because tail wheels are a different thing. Um, did I log off or did you log off? I don't know. I see one. We continue. Um, the goal of a landing, what is it? It's nothing more than to make a landing in a correct place that leaves aircraft, passengers and cargo completely undamaged. There's not more than it is. We can all go for the, the lightest vertical speed that is there on the perfect place on the runway. Forget it. This is not how it works in real life. So I'm going to talk to you about basic technique explanation. Um, stalling. Aircraft factors that work against you. External factors that work against us. Stuff about airfield. And then I'm just going to do patterns. And as I go, um, change the weather. Change the winds. Um, I will do that at uh, Hilversum Airport. Which is my local airport, which I've not, well, it's not local, I have to do an hour drive, but okay. Um, and I'm gonna do some stuff there with the uh, S4 uh, Sting, because that's a very light aircraft and very comparable to um, what I fly in real life. Um, so, that. So, let's get started. Um, basic technique stall at the 10 centimeter level above the ground and why? The reason is simple. If we uh, see how a wing works, how an aircraft works, we know that lift comes from speed. So um, basically having too much speed gives us a bounce, bouncing us back in the air. And we don't want that because when you come back to the ground, then the, bounce, then the landing will be harder. And you can look on YouTube on, on bouncing stuff. Normally an aircraft that does two bounces on the third bounce, it loses its gear by the impact. So we have to land stalled. We don't fly her into the ground. We have to land stalled. And to make a stalled landing, we basically want to reach a speed so low that the aircraft does not generate the lift anymore to keep it on, uh, in the air. Thus, we touch the ground and we stay there. The fun thing, of course, is that you stall at just the right altitude above the ground. If we do that too high, then we smack into the ground. If we do that too low, then we fly into the ground. And both will result in damage to the nose wheel, uh, bounces, um, embarrassing stuff, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna show you a stall later on, on uh, how to do a stall, and of course what that does in the air. Um, aircraft factors that works against us. Prop rotation. Um, very easy, we have a propeller in front of us, a big rearing set of wings basically, and the rotation of the air that it generates slams into the side of the fuselage, thus creating a yaw. If, and the, the fuselage that hits it the most is of course the tail, because we have a vertical stabilizer. Um, so any prop that turns uh, from right to left, will give us a wind impact on the left side of the rudder, meaning that the nose is pushed to the left. If the prop turns the other way, then of course, vice versa, the other way. Um, low versus high wing, I'll touch that first. When an aircraft reaches the ground, it creates an air cushion below the wing. And a low-wing aircraft, of course, where the wing is lower to the ground, creates that more. So a low-wing aircraft will have the tendency to float along the runway instead of wanting to land. A high-wing aircraft does this less. Um, you will see that probably also in the Sting, 
um, with which has a low wing. In real life, I fly the TL3000 more, which is a high wing, and that has a higher wing, so no ground effect or to speak of, so it lands itself more abruptly than a low wing aircraft. It's something to take in, into account because you know a low wing aircraft will float more along the runway before it lands, so you take you need more distance, or you have to aim earlier at the um, uh, at the threshold. P factor. This is a bit. Of, I didn't prepare this. I think P factor. Try me. Ta -ta -ta -ta. There we go. Yeah, this place. This this little. I can. I assume that you can see this. This picture. Yep. Um, what you see here is an aircraft where the prop is straight on a nose wheeler, which means that the whole lifts thing of the prop is the same. A propeller is basically nothing more than ro rotating wings. They generate lift by speed. Speed is caused by the engine. The more revs you make, the more speed it creates, the more lift it creates on its wings. But of course, because of the direction, we're now talking about horizontal speed instead of vertical lift. When you turn that plane of the propeller, like on the tailwheeler or in the climb on any aircraft, you get a load on the upward moving blade that is less than the load on the downward moving blade. And that's something mathematical. I'm not going to explain that. That's too deep for this. What you can learn from this is that the downgoing blade, so let's say the prop is turning to the left, that means that the downgoing part of the prop is on the left side, meaning that side generates more speed, more bite, so to speak. This means that the aircraft pulls to the left because there is more grip of the prop, so you will, than on the right side. That's in the climb for every aircraft, so you have the tendency to go left, to you have, so you have to compensate that. Of course, is the prop turning the other way around, then you have to compensate to the left to compensate the extra pull to the right. Compared, of course, still with the rotating wind hitting the tail and thus forcing us another way as well. On a tailwheeler, you also have this on the ground. And uh, compare that with uh, the heavy engine in the front and a uh, tailwheel on the back. And uh, one side of the aircraft always pulling because of the downward sloping uh, propeller blade. Meaning that you can ground loop, meaning that it doesn't want to steer left, but really wants to steer to the right when you're taxiing. It means that on your on your uh, takeoff roll, um, but also on your rollout after landing, you have to really dance the pedals um, to keep the nose in line with the runway. And this is all because of the P factor, because of the angle that the uh, prop makes compared to the horizontal plane. That's why I'm taking a nose plane, nose wheel plane today also, because it makes it more difficult and um, not every aircraft models this quite well. Default aircraft, I normally think they are wrong in this. Um, an aircraft that does this quite right is, for instance, the uh, Cod French Wilga, that's a tailwheeler. Um, they got it quite right, and that's that's actually a very skittish aircraft when you don't do the pedal dance and it's not a trick it's not um oh because it's pulling to the left then i do the same amount of force on my right rudder um because it's dependent on speed and if you're doing a rollout then you're going slower meaning that the force that you use on your pedals also constantly varies to keep her straight so it's not a trick like oh is pulling to the left, so I'm pulling. I'm pushing to the right. Um, the amount that you have to do that is con is variable, and that's why they, they they call it the pedal dance. It's dancing on the pedals just to keep her straight. And if you see aircraft sometimes on airports with uh, with a tailwheel, you see the rudder going all places, uh, not just one way. It's because of that. Okay. Any questions so far? Not for me. Okay. When? All good? Yes, I'm very clear. Yes. Cool. Cool.
Then we go to the next thing, external factors. Again, working against us. It's always working against us. It's not, it's not ever working with us. And that's wind. And mainly crosswind. And of course, the airfield surface. Now, if we look at wind, this is what we call a component diagram. And what you can see here is, um, imagine that the, the vertical line here is the line of the aircraft from tail to nose. So from tail to nose, it's over here. And the wind is 10 knots coming straight ahead on the nose. That means we have 10 knots, which is over here, and we have no crosswind component. A nice thing to remember is 1975. 1975. For me, it's that easy because the, my, that's my date, of, my year of birth, where the 1 stands for the 0 degrees, the 9 stands for the 30 degrees, the 7 is for 45 degrees, so here it's between 40 and 50, and the 5 for 60 degrees. And that's a component. And I'm saying 1 9 or 7 5, but basically it's 1 point nine or point seven point five. Because Let's say the wind is 10 knots, but we have that on a 30 degree angle. Then I know that it's 9 knots um, crosswind already. 0.9 of 10 knots is 9 knots. So you see how fast that goes. Um, that even a moderate angle of 30 degrees with a wind strength of 10 knots already gives me a crosswind component of 9 knots. Let's say we have that 10 knots, but we have a 45 degree angle. Then we get over here. So we have a crosswind component down here. I'm taking, I'm saying it wrong, by the way. 0.9 is here. And point, let's say here, 0.5. So we have 5 knots already. So you see that um, you get quite an impact already on a crosswind when you uh, calculate that. And the 1975 is quite easy. You just, you just uh, calculate. So um, 1 niner, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.75, meaning that on a 60 degree, I have a 5, uh, five degree crosswind component already. So that's how you can calculate it quite easily. It also means that um, be very wary of winds more than 30 degrees. If it's a really hefty wind, like 30, 30 knots, and you go to 30 degrees, you already have a crosswind component going down of, let's say, 13, 14 knots, something like that. And there's... Um, well, basically, strict criteria. You have the limits on the aircraft. Most aircraft have a crosswind limit of around 10 to 12 knots. The Sting has a crosswind component of 10, 10 knots, uh, meaning it was tested up to 10 knots. Maybe it can do 12, maybe it can do 15, um, but it was tested to 10, and then the test side has said, this is fine, this, the, not do, don't, don't do any more. And you have your own criteria, your own, uh, your own limits. I can, in real life, say that my limits are 10 knots crosswind component. And then I'm bloody sweating. Then it's hard work. So anything more than 10 knots, and I'm not flying. Not to the air airport that I had planned, for instance, where I know that the, aircraft, the, the wind is completely cross. Then I'm not going there. Uh, the, the one of the advantages of Hilversum is that it has free runways. So... Um, yeah, there's always something within the wind. So, that. This is a nifty chart to use. And if you remember, 1, 9 for 30 degrees, 7 for 45 degrees, and 5 for 60 degrees, then you can quite easily uh, calculate for yourself, okay, I'm landing on uh, runway 36, I have a crosswind uh, of uh, 40 degrees, the wind is 10 knots, then basically I have a, uh, a crosswind component of, uh, like, say, half of that. So, 5 knots cross. The other thing, now I'm going back to the browser, is the airfield, of course. 
first to this one in airport theory there are four distances that we use and that's also compared of course to the aircraft what it can do in the aircraft manual it states it needs a minimum of this uh, or a maximum of this uh, on takeoff distance on landing distance and stuff like that and that of course has to match the airfield that you're going to if the runway is too short to land on well don't go there <laughs> if the landing is short enough or long enough to land there but you can't take off from there and normally takeoff is the bigger picture uh, problem especially with tube liners then um, you can land there but you can never go from there again so that's also a bit of a bitch so we have four distances here and we have a runway if I look at the runway in the direction of travel you have this part that's usually a displaced runway where you cannot land it's displaced because for instance here are trees so they displace the threshold a bit so you have more distance to land then you have the keys and after that the markers where you can actually aim for that's usually one around one third of the distance of the whole runway then you have the fresh threshold on the other way then there's a clear area behind that we call that the stopway and there's another area behind that that's not per se clear of obstacles there can be trees there can be buildings we know we call that the clear way the first one LDA stands for landing distance available because you land from here and you have to stop before here easy Tora means take off runway available on a displaced runway this is here because on this part here there are trees for something but when you're taking off that doesn't matter this is normal concrete so you can take off from here instead of here so you can use this but until here because this could be grass or something that cannot hold your aircraft due to its weight the next one is accelerated stopping distance available we're taking off we're not rotating something's wrong we don't have the power we have to cancel the takeoff that means that you have to stop on the runway but you also have the stopway here the stopway is basically a clear area Some, sometimes there is uh, concrete there sometimes there is uh, grass there but it's clear and finally we have the takeoff distance available that's basically the same as Tora but including clearing an obstacle of 50 feet so let's say that I can actually take off all the way from here then I have this part this part still to clear 50 feet if we look at from that from this side it would look like this so we have LDA that's easy take off runway available also easy take the whole runway always take the whole runway there's nothing as useless as runway behind you except maybe altitude beneath you or above you sorry above you um, accelerated stop distance that's including the stopway you don't hit the trees and the TODA is the takeoff distance available um, because you have to clear the trees these distances have to take in mind and normally in the sim we don't do this as much or we just look at a little nav map and say oh we can land there or we can take off from there but it's very nifty handy to know what your aircraft can do compared to the airport that you're at or that you want to go to and of course you can find all this on the internet or in little nav map I thought about let's go to the real way page for uh, Hilversum Airport in the Netherlands and that holds most most countries have this on the internet in some way this is on, uh, on the Netherlands part this is where the airport is at on uh, uh, geometric scale the address telephone number a whole lot of other shit about opening hours which fuels you can get um, all for now this is about the runways these are the six runways three runways both ways and they can they, the strength they are grass and they can hold 6,000 kilograms these are the dimensions in meters so roughly 700 to 600 meters and 50 meters in width um, 
And what's also nice to know... Plonk, 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 plonk. Someone took off. Let's wait a bit. Because Lars dropped up, I think. And there is Lars again. Yeah, the the audio was, was constantly cutting out, so I tried uh, restarting Discord. Hope it goes better now. Okay, hope that goes better. Well, I hope it's all working and recording. I think it's recording correctly. So if you miss something, then you can still replay the recording. Yeah, thanks. Um, aerodrome information, opening hours, etc., etc. What's important here is circuit. Minimum approach altitude is 1,000 feet, and the circuit altitude is 700 feet. So that's what you'll see when we go flying here. Aerodrome chart we have over here. You know, the triangle and the six area. So there's a lot of... This airfield is really nice because A, it is grass, so it's softer than tarmac. And B, there's always a runway available that has uh, headwind and minimum crosswind. The downside of that, of course, is that they don't do enough crosswind landing <laughs> training. But okay, uh, then I go to another, another airfield. Um, when I go to the approach chart, then that's this. And we're going to remember a bit later for in the sim. Because we're going to fly from runway 2.5. Um, and what do we see there? We have a circuit area, which are the outer boundaries. So we can do in that circuit, but the outer boundaries is roughly around the canal here. Uh, there's a, a tower here with a light on it at 377 feet that we can use, that's on downwind. And we have the lakes here and the entry is, if you look at this part of the, uh, the whole airfield is kind of a square. And to enter the downwind path is aiming at the tip of the field here. Um, that's something that we can use as a visual thing. Something to know um, on your boundaries. When I will take off, then I know that here is a farm, farmhouse. So that's the outer limit. And of course, going here, this is, uh, I have on the, let's say, 11 o'clock, I have the heifer here. That's a clear area. The rest is trees. And on the other side, I have this tower. And of course, I have this canal here as a, uh, a reference point. So, all something to know. Of course, we can get this from Little Nav Map, of course. Um, I thought I'm going to take this from a real life perspective um, and see how it goes. So, that's the preparation. Tuck, 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 tuck. What are we going to do? This is all theory. It's all nice and boring. Of course, we want to fly. Um, put it in practice. We're going to do no wind. Take off pattern, downwind, base, final, and touchdown. And what I'm also going to do is go out of the pattern and do a stall. And then we're going to do it with headwind. And then we can do something with crosswind component. And then if we have time and still the energy for it, we can do fun stuff. Let's do an engine failure. Let's do a flap failure. You know, stuff that I train for every once in a while and that you have to do uh, to, to take your exam. So, without further ado... I think you can all see my sim screen now. Yep. We are at uh, Hilversum Airport. And uh, this is where I rent. Dwarf. This is uh, the tower with the C for cash because that's where you pay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know where the C is for. Control tower maybe, but I like to say cash. And these uh, we are parked in line one. These are lines, and they are basically just marked with these these cones. Uh, this is an add-on airfield trousers uh, from uh, FlightSim.io. The generic one is uh, less real life. Let's put it like that. Um, and here is runway 25. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna close the cockpit. And I'm gonna do battery on, generator on, avionics on. Nav lights on. Fuel is on. Uh, all electronics for us are off. I'm gonna initialize this stuff. I'm gonna attach the fuel pump. Yeah, pump is running. So that works. 
I find it a bit annoying, so I'm not using it much. Much. Um, uh, the, the, I find the, the noise annoying, let's so to speak. So, but okay. Uh, normally, on downwind, you would turn the pump on just to prevent any uh, engine pump failure. And I'm gonna zoom this in because that makes us see the circuit distance for us. Okay. This is the S4 Sting. I have flown this one in real life. Um, this is from uh, a Czech aircraft maker uh, TL, TL uh, Ultralight. I normally now fly the TL3000. I fly that the most now nowadays, uh, which is a high wing aircraft. This is a low wing aircraft, so we're going to see some uh, ground effect, basically. Um, everything is done, everything is set. Engine uh, clear uh, for starts. Okay. I don't have to do anything here. Turn the strong one. Taxi out. It's nice to know the airfield because this is, uh, well, this is my hobby place, so to speak. <laughs> Normally I would do the here, here engine checks and uh, all the other checks that are needed. I'm gonna quickly check if my weather is indeed tuck, 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 tuck. null null. Yeah, so we have no wind at the moment. I'm gonna set flap one. I'm gonna line up. And basically, from what I said earlier, from uh, Displaced runway as such. You can see a bit on the grass here. It's not concrete, but let's say over here starts the displaced runway because we have trees over there. So um, I could start from here, um, but on the landing, that's basically the, the crossway point between uh, 25 and uh, 18. Um, Tora, Toda, etc. And LDA. For now, lining up. And first what I'm going to do is take off, go out of the circuit and do a stall. Then I'm come back into the pattern and do a touch and go. So, all set. Full throttle, I see full RPM, so that's good. Rotate it 50. There we go. Keep the speed around 70 with the nose angle. And at 200 feet we pull in the flaps. Keep the speed around 60. So really steep climb. Good climber. She's light of course. That helps. And the altitude of the circuit is 700 feet. So I'm gonna level off at around 700. And of course take some throttle off. And go to 4800 RPM. Now there's a farmhouse over there to the left. This is my outer marker, so to speak, visually. So now I'm going to take a 45 degree turn. And then I'm going to turn out of traffic. Out of the traffic pattern. And I'm going to climb to, let's say, 1200 feet. Climb speed again around 70 knots. And 1200 feet. Let's throttle back. RPM 4800. Manifold around 21 gives us a cruise setting which will eventually take us to 100 knots or 185 kilometers an hour. Trim it a bit so we're, we're trimmed out. Yeah. Okay, first off, a stall. And watch the altitude there. It's now 1380, 1400. I'm gonna pull the throttle completely back. And what we do in a stall, we don't go down. So basically, I'm trying to maintain altitude. But we don't have the power. So the speed will drop. And the nose will go up. And up. And up. And up. We want to keep flying. Want to keep flying. Notice the horizon on the nose. The horizon goes below the nose now. 
We're still not dropping. Now we get stall warning. Now I have to fully pull her. And now she falls away. Throttle up. Save her. Speed back. So you see she stalls around 40 knots. Which is rather low. And basically what you see here. Is what you want to do. Just above the ground. We lost almost no altitude. Again 1400. Now I'm not going to do the same. But I'm first going to slow down. And then I'm going to do full flaps. Because normally we're going to land on full flaps. So. Pulling the throttle. And when you get in the, the white arc. We start pushing flaps down. Flaps 1. Flaps 2. This is landing configuration. Keep her flying. Keep her flying. I don't want to go down and keep speed. I want to keep flying. So I have to pull yoke. Pull yoke. Pull yoke. Pull yoke. Keep her flying. Keep her flying. See what happens now. The wing. The, the nose is not falling down. I'm in a perpetual stall. I am slowly going down. But she's kind of wallows. This is what is fun about most not, uh, ultralights. We are going down. You see, We are descending. But we are basically in a stall. This is what we want on landing. The trick is that we do this as close to the ground as possible. Flaps up. And back to cruise settings. Okay, so far for the theory. These are the Loos Dresser Plassen, very nice. Nice lakes, lots of sailing and other stuff going on there in the summer. And we have here what we call Sword Island or Pistol Island because it's, well, it's shaped like that. And the finger of it points straightly directly to Hilversum Airport. Nice navigational thing. Any questions so far? No questions at all? And I assume you are still hearing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if I don't hear you, then I get... Oh, wait, oh, does it still work? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Going back to the airport. Airfield, basically. You have those, all those small lakes. And we remember from what we did on the... Uh, the approach here's the airfield the square and this is the point the tip of the square where we're going to aim at and the altitude of the circuit was 700 feet so i have to descend in order to come into the track in the circuit at 700 feet because you can't go below or above on the simple reason that other aircraft can't see below themselves so if, there were, if i was coming in at 1000 feet and there was something, someone already flying at 700 feet, I wouldn't see him before I crashed into him. That would be bad. So, any circuit in the world is seven is as an, uh, an altitude. Nominally, internationally, that is, seven, that is 1,000 feet. So, if you don't know, take 1,000. But some airfields take a different number. For instance, like Hilversum Airport. That takes 700 feet. coming in what we're now going to do is a touch and go meaning a landing and then a, uh, a start through maybe I'll pause a bit because it's it's off it's always going a bit sl a bit fast of course so I'm aiming towards the tip of the field already slowing down a bit Here's the canal. This is the outer marker of our pattern that we know of. So now towards the tip, I'm crossing the canal so I can now safely join downwind. Pulling throttle and putting pitch full fine as a precautionary measure that if I do a, uh, a through start, then uh, the prop is already in full pitch, full pitch. I'm downwind and I'm in the white arc. So I'm taking flaps to one. 
and my speed is roughly at the top of the width or of the white mark. That's nominally my uh, approach speed. I know it in kilometers an hour, so I know it's around 130 knots. And you can see in the middle here that we are downwind perpendicular to the runway. Now normally you would choose I've got pause now your landing point from here. And a good measure to do that is pick a landing point that you want to use and place it 45 degrees behind you. So from the wing here there was this would be 45 degrees. Right? I want to land at the crossing between the two runways. That's my aiming point. So I have to fly a bit more in order to be 55, 45 behind and then I can aim for that. That's my aiming point. Here we go. And this is around now. So now I'm going to turn in. And now I also want to start descending a bit. And I want to be on final roughly between 400 and 500 feet. So I'm descending. Sending. I'm base now, 90 degree angle to the runway, eyes on the runway, and track IR helps a lot in this of course, and now I'm final, full flaps, pause, next thing, now is Make sure that you basically fall short when you cut the throttle here, because what you want to do is manage your landing, so you have to pull yourself towards your aim point. If I come in too fast or too high, that means I have to cut throttle completely, then I don't have it in my power to land where I want, because I can't take throttle back more, I'm already at throttle zero. So I want to be in a position that I'm low throttle, but not zero throttle. And like I said, if you are between 400 and 500 feet when you turn final, then that gives a good measure of distance to fly low throttle to your land to your aim point. I'm starting to move around to 50 knots. I have a little bit of throttle on it. Very good. Pause again. Now, this is my aim point. I have the restaurant here. We're overflying that. We have people watching. So it's embarrassing to do something wrong now. Uh, <laughs> um, this is my aim point. You see here the crossing between the two runways. What I'm going to do, fly towards the runway. When I'm very close to the runway, I'm going to cut my throttle. And then I want to stall as close to the ground as possible. And that's difficult to judge. So I have this nifty thing here that also keeps me from saying this, this yellow thing here is, the, is my nose. So if this is above the horizon, then I'm landing on the mains. Then my attitude is more to the back. Um, an easy way to do is, is uh, focus on the horizon. Focus on the horizon and keep her flying. So don't look at the ground. Focus on the horizon. And the angle of the horizon or the distance of the horizon between the nose. Here we go. So I'm over the displaced, cutting throttle. And now I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna talk out loud, keep her flying, keep her flying, keep her flying, keep her flying, keep flying, keep flying, pull the nose, keep flying, 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 keep flying. See the ground effect? Damn, this is a good landing. Full throttle. Speed up. Flaps to normal. Take off. Here we go again. This gentleman was a perfect landing. If I do say so myself. Flaps up. We're going to do this again. But now I'm going to do it without pauses. And I'm uh, going to stay into the inside the pattern. So climbing to 700 feet. Pulling back on throttle to keep at 700. 
This is the farmhouse. Oh, 700, not higher. Not 800. There's the airfield and the runway. So this is crosswind lag. And this is the canal, so we're going to downwind lag. And we're gonna go again. Slow down. Normally I do uh, my checks. Pump on, landing lights on. Fuel tank check. In the white arc. Flaps one. See? Nicely perpendicular to the runway. Keep 700 feet. Keep it in the white arc. And just fly. Maybe trim a bit if you feel the need to. Because you have to pull a bit, of course, due to the low speed. Fly a normal downwind leg. On a nice day, there's uh, usually two or three aircraft in this pattern, in this circuit. So it's quite busy. But everybody does the same, like uh, for instance in a parking garage with your car. If nobody uses the exit as an entry, and if everybody keeps the speed at 5 to 10 kilometers an hour, nothing bad happens. 45 degrees behind, turning in. And starting my descent, so a bit throttle off, otherwise I'm going to done a dive. Throttling off a bit. Eyes on the runway that we take a 90 degree angle to it. You can also see it on my center console. And I'm already a bit low, 450, but that's okay. Turning final, full flaps. And now I'm still throttle off. But you see, I won't make that throttle off, so I have to pull in a bit. A little, little. Throttle and the, the, the throttle manages your vertical speed, not your nose attitude. Here we are over the restaurant. Everybody's watching. Cut throttle. Keep her in the middle. It's easy because there's no wind, of course. And now we're gonna focus on the horizon and keep flying. 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 Keep flying, keep heading straight with the rudder, keep flying. Oh man, beautiful. Runway vacated, flaps up. This is how it's done. Very nice. But without wind. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna taxi back. And then I'm gonna add wind. First headwind. Flaps one. Go around these uh, cones. Big wooden things that destroy landing gears. Okay. Weather. I'm gonna do... And this is in meters per second. So, not just twice as high, so... Whoa! Oh, oh that's stupid. No, oh, oh, yeah, shouldn't have done that. No, that's bad. Is my aircraft still okay? I shouldn't have done it. No, there's a prop missing. Ah, that's stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Engine, where do I fix this stuff? Replace. Engine status damage. Perform maintenance. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Slip of the wrist. Here we go again. Um, wind is in meters per second, which is roughly uh, two. So, um, what is it again? 20 meters per second is 10 knots? No, it's the other way around. Let's five do. 5 meters per second is 10 yeah. knots. Yeah, so 5 meters per second is 10 knots. Yeah, should we do that? 10 knots on the nose. 2 5, we are taking runway 2 5, so we have 10 knots on the nose. Where's my runway? <laughs> oh, I'm here. Did it make a bit of a boo boo, so I'm uh, turned around. Now, what we will notice is that, of course, the downwind lag, which is with the wind on the, on the tail, meaning that we go way faster. And when we turn to final, then we go against the wind, so we have to turn more, we have to use more throttle to get to the runway. Here we go. 40. Rotate. Flaps up. You also see that we climb harder because, um, well, the wind is pushing us up, of course. We have basically a, a 10 knot help in climbing. Throttle back to cruise. I have to do a bit of trimming now. Turn into the farmhouse. Turning towards downwind. Already throttle back. Because I want to pull flaps. And for that I have to be in the white arc to not damage the flaps. Damage flaps, no. That's okay. Keeping speed and altitude. We have the runway over there. And this is of course is a, a homogeneous wind. It's 10 knots, so it's not fluctuating and not varying in, in direction. There's no gusting. So everything that normally you would not have. 45 degrees behind. Cutting a bit of throttle, going base. You know, every weather forecast that says uh, wind is 250, 10 knots, that's a average. It's never that. Meaning that every landing is different. The wind is pushing us to the side a bit. Let's see if I can do this correctly. The wind is pushing us to the right. Wasn't Doesn't want to turn to the left, so... Here we go. Use more rudder than I did earlier. Here we are. Full flaps. If I cut throttle, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to take. I'm going to go for the trees. So this is not okay. So I have to use more throttle. You can see already. I'm using more throttle to pull us towards the runway. It's shaky and hefty because well a micro light is light so the wind has very much effect on it. Over the stopway, pull throttle. And here we go again. This is my aim point. Keep her flying, keep her flying, keep flying, keep flying, keep flying, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, 
pull back. There we go. It looks so easy, huh? Okay, now the fun starts. <laughs> I'm gonna do... Let's say it's 8 knots now. But instead of 220, I'm gonna take... 220. Meaning... Um, the wind has a 30 degree deficiency on us, meaning that we have a 0.9 uh, cross component of roughly, uh, oh, let's, let's say two knots, would it be about two knots, two knots of crosswind component. Here we go. Taxi back, quickly. Of course, tailwind landings are a no-no um, because tailwind landings uh, give jutter on the tail in the elevator, so the control is way harder. And if I remember correctly, every two knots of extra tailwind means 10% of extra landing distance. So if you do a tailwind landing and you have something of a landing distance available. Um, you can throw that out the window because it adds 10%. And on this runway, which is 700 meters, um, that would, in its maximum, mean a total landing runway, runway needed more of seven of 70 meters. So that's that's not, you know, it's not little, it's not, a, it's not na uh, small. Um, I can land this aircraft in real life in roughly 200 meters. Um, if I would do that with two knots tailwind, then I would need 20 meters more. And 20 meters is, well, roughly four times your aircraft. So if there's a tree uh, down there, then you would go through it four times. <laughs> so that would be bad. So tailwinds, we don't do. Never, ever. Flaps are one, full throttle, going. So we now have wind from the right. No, from the left, sorry, 220. And I feel that, so I have to rudder a bit. And you see, in the, in, you see what's happening when we take off? I'm drifting a bit. Oh, watch the speed. Climb speed. Flaps up. Level her off. Cross over the farmhouse. This is so amazingly cool in this sim. That I can see this as if, as if it were my real life flying. All these lakes, all these trees, all these buildings, they are basically the same as in real life. Makes it really cool. Because I have something to compare it to. Okay, slowing down. Speed is dropping, but we're keeping the altitude. And this is a bit too high, so I'm gonna drop the altitude. I have to do 700 feet. Now I'm gonna work against myself, because... Diving means speeding up, meaning less time to do flaps, so my whole cycle is now shorter. So it's it's stressing me, so to speak. Flaps one. Throttle up to keep it, to keep the speed. Already we're past halfway downwind. Just for that uh, little boo-boo on the altitude. Forty-five degrees behind. Turning in, give myself a bit more space. So a bit more than the forty-five degree rule. I 
and turning final. And the wind is pushing me out, you see? I have to compensate because I'm now yeah. overshot. Already, because it's it's only 30 degrees, but already it's pushing me out, full flaps. And I have to rudder a bit. You can't see that, of course, but trust me, I'm having to rudder a bit. And a bit aileron. Aileron just for keeping the, the wings straight and the rudder for keeping my direction okay. You see that my nose is a bit pointing to the left. I'm not straight before the runway, so I have to compensate. But on the last moment, I have to pull the wheels straight. So now not only I'm keeping flying, but I'm only ruddering. Also ruddering to the right. Rudder to the right. Oh, it's drifting me off. Overshoot, go. Wave off. And when I'm at a safe speed, pull one flaps. Otherwise, I get below my stall speed and that ends badly. So, failed attempt. And that's only a 30 degree. Flaps up. Let's do that again. Going crosswind. Going downwind. Slowing down a bit. Downwind checks. Flaps one. Keep the speed and altitude. A bit too fast. Go again. Now that I know that the wind pushes me out, I'm going to turn in a little earlier. Full flaps. Because I've learned from the last time. I hope. Nope. <laughs> God damn it. Here we go. Photo closed. This is better. This is better, this is better. Keep her flying, keep her flying. I'm compensating with ailerons. I could land on one wheel, but it's not necessary. Keep her flying. There we go. With a bit of crosswind. Beautiful. Full flaps, no. Flaps one. Full throttle. Because now I'm gonna start it. Now I'm gonna do some really fun stuff. Pause. Just for time's sake, I'm gonna do I don't want gusts. No, I don't want gusts. I want five and I want it from two zero zero. 
now we are at roughly 45 degrees 50 degrees this is the runway and this is the wind uh, meaning that our crosswind component will be no takers <laughs> <laughs> One nine or seven point seven, so seven knots uh, crosswind component with ten knots total, and you remember the one nine or seven five, one point nine or point seven point five point seven is on the forty five degree radial, meaning that a ten knot wind on a forty five degree angle, roughly this is fifty degree, but okay, let's say forty five, means that there are still seven knots now uh, as a crosswind component. So we have a seven wind seven not cross from the left and this is approaching my personal um, limits and the aircraft because the aircraft is tested on uh, um, 10 knots so flap stop Pulling throttle a bit, got the cruise setting 700 feet, turning cross. In the air, you, you notice, of course, that you're drifting, of course, a bit. You know, the, the, the wind is, is doing stuff, but that's not really important at the moment. What's important, of course, is what you do related to the ground when you actually touch the ground. And the fun stuff is, of course, that you have to land or straight. I'm going up again. I don't want to up again. I want to 700 feet. Um, the wheels, of course, are aligned with the fuselage, so you can't land too, um, well, slanted from the runway. Um, the nice thing, of course, on this field, it has its grass. It's not concrete. When rubber hits concrete, that's one. Uh, when rubber hits concrete, then it wants to go, of course, in the direction of the tires. If rubber hits grass, it's more slidey. You don't have tire wear, which is nice, of course, from a maintenance perspective. But it also means that you have more margin as a pilot to land a bit sideways. Not a whole lot, but a bit. Okay, this is way too far, but I'm taking a long final. So we can see how edgy this can be. Doesn't want to turn in. Full flaps. Add throttle. I'm again overshooting my leg. So coming back a bit. Now pulling myself towards my aim point. Oh. This is way fun for passengers, by the way, this kind of stuff in real life. And I say this sarcastically. <laughs> Okay, pull throttle. I have to keep an angle. Keep her flying, keep her flying. Wing into the wind, keep her flying, keep her flying. Keep her flying. Ooh. Yes! I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. Well, we can make it even harder to, to, to make a full crosswind uh, landing. Uh, I'm not doing that. This is basically, the, you, you get the gist, you get the demo of it. 
Um, and the message here is, of course, when you have a 10 or 12 knot crosswind fully cross on any runway, because the airfield itself has only one runway, then maybe you shouldn't just go there. That's that's also something that's that's a reality in flying, and I think also in sim flying. You can do it, of course, because it, what what's the worst that can happen? You know, it's a game, it's a sim. Um, but it can be frustrating, of course, when it doesn't want to uh, do what you want to do. Questions so far? I gather silence is no. <laughs> um, okay, I think I also named some fun stuff. Engine failures, flap failures. Yeah, well, we can do something without flaps. This is something that we train on. That I'm trained on because the flaps on the TL aircraft are electric. They are not in a in a push mode like in the eight way Comanche, which is an actual rod. So um, apart from a linkage braking, um, the flaps will always work. Um, but if your electrics fail on an aircraft like this, everything basically fails except the engine. If the engine fails, then basically your engine fails, but your electrics keep working. If everything fails, then you're really screwed. But the chance of that is very slim. But electrics can fail. And if electrics fail, that means that flaps will not work. Because they are electri electrically actuated. So what I'm going to do is one final landing. I'm going to take off the wind now. Because then it would be very embarrassing. Um, I'm guessing. Uh, so I'm going to take the wind completely away. Flaps are set one. Taking off, full throttle, Whoa. easy, 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 that was too fast. I'd have an instructor frowning upon me by now. Two hundred feet, flaps up. No matter how great my guess of flight later is the count behavior is still not realistic <laughs> so. yeah the base is better than p3d i'll give yeah. it that um it's not a very high bar <laughs> true true i know but i also see that some third party aircraft like this thing like the a 2 comanche they get really good they are really close to what i would expect um yeah. uh, to be the real world behavior and I'm talking, I'm doing all kind of shit now with the altitude and with my patterns. So fucking up. Okay, flaps, flaps are broken. This, I don't have this thing, but the Comanche is amazing. Yeah, Comanche is really good. Yeah, and this thing is nice because I've, I have flown this one in real life. And uh, the TL3000, TL which is also coming from FS, FS Reborn. Um, I fly that a lot in real life. So uh, I'm I'm also in the, uh, the testing team for it. Yeah. And... Uh, that's a real, something I'm really looking forward to. Okay, so. Oh my god, my flaps are not working. <laughs> now we know from the stall back in the beginning that the stall speed is then, of course, higher. Flaps lower the stall speed, so the landing speed will be higher. And of course, because the, the flaps alter the, let's say, the image of the wing, the cord of the wing, this means... Um, I need a higher altitude, uh, attitude to land the aircraft. So my, my landing will be faster and my landing will be more nose high attitude. That's what I expect. I haven't practiced this yet in advance. So I'm, well, looking forward to whatever happens. <laughs> Going base. I have to mind my stall speed, of course, that I don't go to, uh, let's say, 40 knots. We know, yeah, 40 knots. That we, that's what we tested. Below 40 knots would be bad. So try to keep 50 on the, maybe even a bit higher. And the nose will be high upon landing. 
Mm, too fast. You know, flap slow me down. I'm too fast. 17 knots already. This is, this is going to be a floater. Because of the ground effect and the speed. Maybe we don't even make it. Keep flying, keep flying, keep flying, keep flying, keep flying. Keep flying, keep flying. We're not going to make this. <laughs> no, nope, go around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next time I have to come in lower. What's the clean start speed? Roughly 40. Then an approach at about 50 should be fine. 50 over the threshold. Yeah, but they also slow me down. So when I uh, descend it, yeah. then yeah. I build up speed. Up speed. Yeah, yeah. So you see exactly what happens. And then you basically become uh, a kind of a victim of your own uh, situation. So next time I have to come in maybe at a uh, longer final leg, so I can more easily manage to be in a lower position when I uh, come to the threshold. I want to be lower when I come in, so I have more landing distance available. And this is fun stuff to do in real life, of course, because, you know, it's every two years you have to practice this to keep your uh, your license valid with an instructor. Um, but I make it a rule to do every first line of my logbook, which is 10 flights, um, to do this by myself, to go do emergency practice, to do no flap landings, to do well, whatever um, sucky thing the universe can throw at me <laughs> to keep myself uh, more in tune for when it might actually happen yeah. okay so I'm taking a longer you know it is now way above 45 degrees I'm taking a longer final I'm still within the confines because that's the outer edge of the of the heifer here the clear area I'm taking throttle off still still throttle off Taking a bit of speed out, or leveling. I could do a, a crab, of course, but that's, well, risky stuff. Above trees, so I'm not going to do that. Now I'm at around 16 knots. I'm slowly descending, putting a little more descent on, almost touching the trees. Throttle is off, so I have no control basically on where to land, but I know that I'm low, so it's okay. Over the trees, I want to be over the trees. You know that. Very slippery plane at the peaks. Yeah, but, and you see that the profile is way lower now for landing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, keep her flying, keep her flying. But you see the speed is so slow in building off, going off. Going off, going off, going off, going off, break, 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 break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. <clears throat> <laughs> so you see what, what flaps do. You know, it's about speed, it's about angle that you come in. You have to come in way lower because the indeed this plane is quite slippery. It doesn't lose speed a lot quickly enough so it's uh, um, yeah fun to do okay what I'm gonna do now and this is the final thing I'm gonna do engine failure uh, for this I'm gonna do a quick slew
and this might end really badly because again I haven't practiced this yet I'm just doing this out of hand so I'm uh, a bit too high electrics are miraculously again working and I'm going to my crosswind leg Engine failure. Throttle off. Where I want to land. Can I make it back to the air airfield? I could. But it would be... Well, there's no wind. So I'm going, going for another air... I'm going for 3.6. And I'm going to use flaps only when I see I'm on final. Can I make this? I'm going to try to make this. Flaps 1. Flaps 2. Throttle is completely closed. I'm too high. I'm a bit too fast. Maybe I won't keep her flying, but just plonk her down and take the brakes. But for now, we're looking good, we're looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. Brakes. Yeah, you, you made it. You made it. <laughs> Amazing. I did not think that one was going to work, but you made it. I made it, yeah. Yeah, and of course when when you do this cross country, let's do another one. Let's make a short. Oh, this is bad. Stop this. Oh, this is also bad. I broke it. You wanted to try engine out. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Let's see. Let's see if I can repair this in flight, or does it? <laughs> it doesn't want me. <laughs> no, 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 Mister. You're not gonna do this now. No, this is bad. Okay, engine failure. Fine. This is real engine failure. Pick a field. Any field. There. Compared to my altitude, I'm saying I can make this one. It's too bad it's going a bit tapsy, but okay. This is dangerous, I'm taking this one. Tough one. Good practice. Flaps two. Keep her flying, keep her flying. Don't want to bounce. Then I'm in a canal. Keep her flying, keep her flying, keep her flying. Yeah. That's what you do in real life. Pick a field. Try to start her now. In this in this case, it's pretty obvious this wouldn't <laughs> this wouldn't work again. Um, pick a field, go with it, and uh, hope you don't make the news. <laughs> That's about it. Um, perform some maintenance. Ooh, it's working again. Isn't that nice, gents? Um, I think this about rounds is off. Um, so what we did. If I go back to the whole thing, a bit of explanation on basic technique. Um, try to land stalled always because that's the most safe and the most effective landing. It does it prevents you from bouncing. It prevents you from all other kind of things that an aircraft does when it still has speed. Um, the factors that work against you. Prop rotation, uh, the, the P factor, especially in climb, of course, for nose readers. 
low versus high wing, where you see on this one, it's very slippery and it has a ground effect. Mm -hmm. So it's really floaty. Um, external factors, we covered that, of course. The, the surface of the airfield here is grass. And, uh, well, wind is uh, the big oops factor. And so also um, seeing what your own limits are. What are the aircraft limits? What are your own limits? If your own limits are five knots uh, crosswind component, fine. You know that. But then also, when you fly and you, you want to use real weather, um, don't go to an air, airfield that has only one runway with the wind completely cross over it, over five knots. If you know that you can't do that, don't do it in the sim for, uh, for, uh, for the DVA. Or do it without the VA and just have fun and practice with it. And if it goes wrong, go around, learn from it and adapt so that you can take it. And of course you have the aircraft limits. Um, most aircrafts have a limit, like I said, around 10 knots. So generally for any l small aircraft, don't do cross lines over 10 knots. Because maybe you can, but the aircraft makes it that much difficult. Um, and some aircraft can even not make that. Uh, let's say the PC-6, uh, has, which has straight sides. Um, straight sides are hell, hellish for crosswinds. Um, so probably that's even lower than 10 knots. Larger aircraft, of course, as of also this thing. And most large aircraft, I think, are around 12 to 15 knots. Um, but yeah, like I said, you no. have you have your personal limits. So the the seven three seven is twenty five knots. Twenty five even okay. Oh. Then, then I'm way lower. Yeah. Well, okay, that, it, it, you're, it, uh, you're approaching much faster, so the the apparent crosswind component is much less. Yeah, and still, of course, when you're coming into a storm, and uh, and they of course they will take a runway that's that's mostly into the wind. Yeah, of course. Um. But still, um, it takes a big man to have a personal limit. So not an aircraft limit, but a personal limit that's around 25 knots. I know for sure I cannot. This yeah. is way because I'm, I would crash. In real life, have I would crash. Seen, uh, have you ever seen videos of the first flight of the Airbus A300? I'm going with yes, but I still have to dig up how that went again. The... Uh the highest crosswind component the the A300 ever encountered on a test flight was on its very first flight. Oh, okay, and it was uh, something about 30 knots, I think. Oh, that's high. Is it on YouTube? I'm gonna, gonna look that yeah, up then. Probably, probably first yeah. flight. Huh? So the very first time that new aircraft ever flew. Okay. Crosswind. <laughs> Damn. Oh, a good test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can strike that can, can strike that one of, of the test list. Yeah, try put it up there. Pretty knots. Yeah. Um, anyway, pattern definitions, knowing your airfield. You know, in sim, it's quite easy to just fly somewhere and just land. Um, in real life, we have some more rules, some more regulations, of course, to make it safe, so that everybody uh, who shares the airspace, which is always more busy around an airfield than somewhere else. Um, Know your airfield, know its surroundings, know, know what, what um, your pattern is, what your boundaries is, but also uh, your visual cues. Um, nominally take 1000 feet, I know Hilversum is 700 feet, but nominally take 1000 feet above ground for uh, pattern flying. And if you take your aim point 45 degrees behind you, which, like I said, is easy with a track IR. Maybe a less, little bit easy with, with someone else, something else. But um, then usually you can try to land normally there. And then you go base, then you go descent. So let's say you're around 500 when you tur turn to final. And then you can just easily pull it into the, uh, the runway. And you have enough space to just keep it flying, keep it flying until it stalls to towards the ground. That's the trick. Putting in it in practice is something else. <laughs> and we did something without wind, we did with head in, we did cross component, and we did some fun stuff with engine failure and flat failure. Well, that's around it. Final thoughts, questions, etc. When? How did you find this? Uh, 
Yes, thank you, Toby. Yes, I find uh, it uh, very uh, difficult, you know, when you you simulation uh, have the wing components, you know, uh, only look like a very light in the full. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, because uh, for on the four knots when you do on the five knots, yeah. Yeah. It's still very, very, uh, very like a real, you know, very, very. The aircraft is, is you have very uh, what is the compensation for the adjustment of yeah. the manually. Yeah, true, and then and that's 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 really uh, a factor on small aircraft, you know, and and uh, a TL two thousand or a three thousand. Um, these aircraft weigh all up around five hundred kilograms. Um, so the the wind effect on a light aircraft is that is quite high. Well, on a seven thirty seven, five knots is nothing, uh, because that you know that's two hundred tons. So um, doesn't bother that that much. Um, so that's why I chose a light aircraft to to show you the what even a, a bit of wind can do. And um, like I said, if you're flying and you uh, you notice uh, like nil nav map or some other weather report, um, um, oh the wind is twenty degrees off. It's very easy to see. Uh, okay, 15, 15 knots, t t 20 degrees. Take a bow. Well, let's uh, well, let's say this. Let's say uh, four knots, four knots already. Uh, even more. No, six knots. Six knots already on crosswind component. If you have 20 knots headwind and it's only 20 degrees or even 10 degrees, even 10 degrees, you still have three or four knots. So. Um, and that's what you'll see a lot, of course. You know that that uh, an airport or you choose an air uh, a runway uh, that's close to headwind, but let's say 10, 15 degrees off, you still have a couple of knots on crosswind. That's that's very common, of course. Yeah. Yeah. When I see this is the uh, on the simulation, you know, next times so I have very. I concentrate to. I never learned this way, you know, the across wing components for the yes, uh, yeah, for like the aircraft. So that's the when I can overcome my problem, you know, when I have the trouble to landing on the center line and adjustable. You know. Yeah, and I would say just just uh, take a small aircraft and do touch and goes. Uh, the, you know, like, what, what, like, like we did, just do that. Just do five, six, seven, ten, eight, nine uh, touch and goes on an airfield with a light aircraft with no wind. Just practice it. You practice the aircraft, you practice the technique, and uh, it gives you the feeling of on how to land properly. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The thing that I have the is more difficult, you know, when when you. Well, difficult. That's that's a subjective term, of course. Like, like a high wing. A high wing would have more would have less ground effect. Yes, yes, yeah. Low wing is uh, yeah, but the, very maneuverable, very low speed. You know. Yeah, but the the the, the high the low wing has a uh, tendency to float, so you float a bit above the runway. It does also means that you can land or softer. Uh, so it's not all bad, you know. Uh, a high wing aircraft will have less ground effect, so we'll want to land more uh, or land faster, so to speak, on zero throttle than a low wing aircraft. Um, so you have to pull a bit more to keep her flying, and then you can land just as soft. But that's a different aircraft characteristic, like a Cessna 152, Cessna 172. Um, those are high wing aircraft. That um, have a dis different characteristic close to the ground, but in the end, it's just you compensating for it. Yeah, I have very deeply, you know, the um, for the uh, in data, you know, knowledge for tonight. When I file for the maybe 50 hour already on the A2A commencing, mm -hmm. so I all 100 of. 
10 times landing, 10 times bouncing, bing, bing, bing. Because I never know how, what is happening. Maybe tonight I understanding when you, if landing next time I file for the A to A. Let's uh, see. Command C. So I have to maintain very in uh, slow speed maybe. That they will not bouncing. I'm pretty sure it's uh, that you're landing too fast. So I'm going to do one last landing in A to A and then I'm uh, off to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so I'll take the Comanche as a, a final note. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, I'm gonna shut down already because it's been a very long day. Yeah, indeed, I understand. So I'll take one for that, for when, and then it's uh, then it's bad time yeah. for me too. Cool that you can join, uh, Lars. Uh, the lesson. Yeah, cool that you can join. Yep. See you later. Sure. Okay, all Good night. All the best. Take care. Yeah, thanks, man. You too. Bye. Bye. Yeah. So, a bit of loading. Yeah, yeah. That's the reason I, I bounce. I think uh, you, you're, when I watch your aircraft, uh, you know, the carrot. So, you, the low, low wing aircraft, you need a speed to touch down. Very, yeah. Very, very, uh, There's, uh, basically, there, there, and basically, there are two reasons why you bounce. One is that you land really hard, so you basically, basically bounce back. Um, that means that you stalled out too early or too high. Um, that would definitely hurt an aircraft and your back. <laughs> um, or you're just flying too fast still, meaning that when you touch down, there is more speed in the aircraft than there should be. So you you don't stall, so you go up again because you have a speed and you have a slight bounce up. You have the ground the ground effect under it, so um, that means that you just go up again. But then, of course, the speed really tapers off, and then you come back even come down even harder. So then you get the bounces. There's uh, and there's a lot of stuff on on YouTube on on, on crashes on that with where you see an aircraft just bounce one time, two times, and the third time it goes through its landing gear. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I, I did, you know, two times, three times bounce. Yeah. But the A to A, I find is uh, when I do with York, so the trim is very nice, you know. Yeah. When I stayed at the power, uh, 20. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the Comanche is, is not per se an easy aircraft to fly because it's quite heavy. It's a six person aircraft, I think. Um, so it's 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 quite big for a GA, General Air Aviation Aircraft. It's quite a big aircraft. Yeah, it is big, fast. Yeah, it's powerful. I think uh, I also see my my loading not going on. So I hope this works. Otherwise, maybe my sim is a bit uh, iffy uh, at the moment. Yeah, if not, uh, Toby, we can uh, knock off tonight for light too yeah. later for you. Too stress. You need a rest. Nah. Tomorrow have to keep energy to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries on that. But of course, we can all stare at a blue bar not moving. Um, and it seems that that and is it uh, be, uh, maybe look like a freezer. Yeah, it looks frozen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can uh, knock off yeah, all the stream. YouTube, oh yeah. yeah. Oh oh yeah. Oh, there's life. There's life. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, aircraft selection, Comanche. Uh, here we go. In the Comanche we have three flap settings, meaning that I'll take full flap 1 on downwind, flap 2 on the base, and full flap flap 3 on uh, final. Yeah. Because a bigger aircraft. 
Yeah, well, you have more flap settings, and uh, normally, well, this is this is how I've been taught. You know, if you have two flap settings, you have one for landing and downwind, and the the that biggest one, the, the biggest flap setting is for the final for the landing, uh, and of course the the actual landing. Uh, when you have three settings, then you do a downwind and a base and a uh, final set. And on oh, takeoff, okay. it's uh, takeoff is only flap one, flap one. Okay. In, in your aircraft or in your airfield, they, they have normally no uh, lots of uh, small aircraft, yeah, one seven two or a lot of small aircraft, yeah. Yeah. And with good weather, in the summer it's very busy. Yeah, it is. Okay, here we are. Let's see. And we are running. Okay, I'm not gonna touch all this crap. I don't need it. Taxi out runway two five. I have to warm her up again, of course, because command she can go bust when you go fly with cold oil yes the simulation yes yeah so flaps one for takeoff So I'll wait a bit for the oil temperature to come up. Yeah, the fuel temperature is not rising. Yeah, I'll put it at 1000 RPM. And keep the brakes on. And then we look at this one at the oil temperature, which is now 23 degrees. It should be 50. 50 is the minimum that should, you would normally do so let's warm her up a bit yeah this won't take a time to ready for fly only a little so. So basically the same what we're going to do, I'm going to do a takeoff, stay in the pattern at 700 feet, fly a downwind, I'll keep the gear down, or oh, maybe not, maybe we'll try with it, and then on base, and then of course a, uh, a final, and see how, uh, how good I can land her. Good with this. We'll go. Okay, here we go. Flaps one. Line her up straight. Here we go. This is not no wind. We have a bit of wind. Gear up. Two 
to on his feet, flap up, flaps up, falls. Uh, let's look at the weather. Yeah, live weather. Let's not do that. Let's go to zero wind just for the effect of landing her. Climb settings 24 24. 700 feet. Pull back. Over the farmhouse. This craft is, of course, way faster than the sting. So we have to really anticipate already. Pulling throttle. Gear down. And green. Checked. Flaps one. Staying in the white arc, so around 100 knots. Pitch full fine. Look over the airfield. We're next to the runway, so a good downwind leg. Take the crossing as our, as our uh, aim point. 45 degrees behind. This is roughly now, but I'll take a bit more distance within the circuit. Yeah, now I'm gonna turn it in. Also gonna descend. Oh, I'm way too high, I'm 1,000 feet. Didn't mind my altitude. Yeah. Flaps 2. Maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't. Let's see. I've got more flaps though, so... Flaps 3. Oh, easy, easy. Maybe too high. Yeah, too fast. Not too high, too fast. Very, very fast. But we'll see. My aim point is correct. So, again, focus on the horizon. Keep her flying. Keep her flying. Keep flying. Pull back, pull back. Keep flying. But keep this nose altitude. Don't get too high. Keep flying, keep flying, keep flying, keep flying. Stall warning. Yeah. Oh baby, no bounce! Yeah, it's not damage, only 40 knots touch down. Yeah. But you see, it is, it is what it is. If you land slowly enough and basically stall on the runway by just focusing at the horizon and just trying to keep her flying above the ground, Eventually, gravity will do its work, and you'll have a very soft landing. Yes, it is. So yeah, this went great. All right, yeah. Thank you, Toby. I will see you along later. You know. Yes. Uh, yeah. You spending time for tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad to do this. I'll uh, I'll uh, stop the recording and uh, upload it soon, and uh, then post it in the uh, in the Discord. So uh, cool that you were here. Okay, yeah. You take care. Yeah. Sure. And if you want to do a uh, a specific uh, session with the DC6, uh, let me know. We'll plan something. Okay, yeah, yeah. You are home now. It's already, I think, uh, 10 past 5. 10 past, yeah. Yeah, I indeed. Maybe 11 past, 11 past, no? Yeah, it's, uh, it's quarter past 11 here in the evening, so yeah. Oh, quarter past 11. Okay, yeah. so I'm in Sydney here. It's 7 past, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you. Good show, man. Talk to you later. Thank you. All the best. Yeah, cheers. Cheers.
En hiermee gaan we ook de opname eindigen. Voor wie hem terugkijkt, voor who is watching the best back. Um, thanks, see you soon.